Bird Box is a Netflix film which was released in late 2018. It became a huge movie mostly because of the memes it generated. I avoided watching this film as I thought it was just a joke, but then my friend told me that it's pretty good, so I decided to watch it. I was fairly disappointed. I've waited some time to talk about the film as I want to explore it in a more serious light, and now since some time has passed, it's time to analyse what truly made Bird Box a bad movie, and that is its writing. Spoilers ahead for the film. Bird Box, directed by Suzanne Beer, is based off the book of the same name by Josh Mellerman. It follows Mallory, played by Sandra Bullock, as she survives an invasion by an unknown entity. The film alternates between two timelines, the present day and the time shortly after the event occurred. The use of the time jumps ruin the film. It tells the audience where Mallory will end up. It shows how the group of survivors she's with will all die and it shows that both pregnant women successfully give birth. The immediate tension from the scenes that take place in the past vanishes, leaving the scenes from the past to be filled with boring, cliché doomsday event tropes. There's the crazy one talking about the end game, as this movie puts it, there's the hot young chick and the cool guy who wants to have sex, there's the old confused lady, the hardened old man, the caring guy, and the one under control, and the two pregnant women. It's a group of generic characters without any personalities, or those that have one are semi-interesting. Machine Gun Kelly and the trainee cop literally leave during the movie for no apparent reason. They just take the car and leave, presumably to go to the shopping centre and lived out there. However, the film never builds up to them leaving and living there. The one character that does suggest that doesn't do it. Characters could appear for one scene and then disappear for the rest of the film, as the elderly lady does when she's needed to knock Douglas out. The supporting characters are bland, simple vessels crafted to carry the plot along. The protagonist, Mallory, is unlikable at the start of the film, but this allows for her to grow into a caring mother. Even that is abrupt in its execution. She shows glimpses of caring for some and not caring for others. She treats Olympia's daughter with no love, and as forced exposition later in the film reveals, the girl is scared of Mallory because of it. She shows little interest in Olympia at the start, and even little care for her own son. Both children are also able to swim without any training, and that in rapids. It's illogical. Had the screenplay focused solely on Mallory and one or two supporting characters, there would be more of an emotional connection between the audience and Mallory. If it wasn't for the cast, the characters would be utterly boring to watch. The film's poor writing goes beyond that of the characters. It extends to the universe itself. As established throughout the film, the creatures cause anyone who looks at them to want to kill themselves. The first victim, the audience and the protagonist see, is a lady in the hospital. She bangs her head against the window several times, which is intriguing, but then she stops trying to kill herself, even though she's not properly restrained so she can stare at Mallory for dramatic effect. Her eyes are filled with anger and not fear as almost every other affected character shows later in the film. Nothing is set up with this moment, but it creates tension for what is to come. When Mallory's sister sees something and tries to kill herself, it becomes clear that some entity makes those that see it want to kill themselves. She steps in front of a moving truck and dies, but not before dramatically looking at Mallory. It's a reoccurring moment that characters look at her for dramatic effect, but it raises the question as to whether people are still aware even after seeing the creature. However, the idea is ruined when a later character tries to help Mallory, but instead sees the creature. She says, Mom, please don't go. It appears that she sees her mom and then proceeds to kill herself. The film later says that the entities will appear as one's fears or a deep loss. The fact that the lady said that doesn't make sense as she didn't show any sign of being self-aware before her death. Her husband was not far from her, yet she didn't look at him like the other victims did. The film's poor writing continues when the characters find out that some people are kept alive by the entities to kill other survivors and make them see the creatures. It's an interesting concept but is never really explained. It first comes out of nowhere during a scene in the river, and while it is implied that mentally ill people turn into the state, it's never truly explained. Unlike not showing the creatures, this is something that would have benefited the film had it been explained. The final contradiction regarding the creatures come out when Gary enters the home of the survivors and is revealed, albeit expectantly, to actually be under the control of the entity. 
However, the problem arises when he's been living with the survivors for some time and has not startled the birds whatsoever, as every other entity or controlled person has. He's shown to suppress it somehow, but why wouldn't the entities themselves suppress it during the film as to avoid warning Mallory of their arrival? While talking about the entities themselves, they seem to gain various qualities throughout the film. Although they are always shown on screen as a windstorm of sort, the entities cast a shadow over the car when the survivors drive to the store. They never cast some form of shadow again, simply to avoid revealing the creatures. They also gain the skill to control some humans and suppress their presence within the human as stated earlier. The final unexplained skill is that they gain the ability to mimic voices within human minds. Within the final act, the entities try to manipulate the children into taking their blindfolds off, but this power was never used earlier on in the film and is also present just to create an intense finale. There is an extent to which ambiguity can be used and if used too much, it takes away from the film rather than support it. Finally, the film's conclusion acts if the story has ended when in fact, not much has changed. Mallory and the children, now given the terrible names of Olympia, the girl's mother, who actually said she wanted to name her child Cinderella, and Tom, they all remain with other survivors in a school for the blind. But it's never shown that the school has sufficient supplies to sustain many people. The only things shown are birds to warn when the creatures are near, and if controlled people can mask themselves from birds as shown earlier in the film, then this supposed safe haven is not really safe. Mallory and the children, along with all the other survivors, will either run out of food or be attacked by the controlled, with no hint of the military successfully fighting against the invading entity and bringing the story to a close.